Hello YouTubes, welcome back to Telly's Marine Tales. My name is Chantal, I'm a marine biologist, and on my journey to becoming a marine biologist, I completed my PhD back in end of 2018, and I think I graduated early 2019, and I managed to complete my PhD in just under three years. And the only way I managed to do this was to maintain a pretty high level of productivity throughout those three years. But I know from experiencing that maintaining a high level of productivity and being motivated and trying to get through your PhD can sometimes be really difficult. Sometimes it feels like you're on this never ending road and yeah, it's just difficult to keep things going. So I wanted to share some tips and tricks with you. We're going to talk about four specific things about how I managed to stay productive throughout. So I hope it helps you. If it doesn't, if you enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up button. And without further ado, let's get into it. So you first need to organize your time and your tasks. As a PhD, you're essentially the master of your own time. You don't really have any classes to go to most of the time. And apart from some meetings with your supervisor or scheduled lab time, really you get to choose what you want to do with your time. So you need to find a way to manage your time and your tasks so that you know you're doing the right thing at the right time. And there are two systems that I think are really, really great specifically for a PhD. So the first is bullet journaling and I used this during my PhD and it saved my life <laughs> during that time because a PhD is like this really huge project that you have and sometimes it's difficult to know, okay, what do I need to do on a daily basis to work up to this huge thesis that I need to hand in at the end of the day. And bullet journaling is a great way to do this. Now, it's not those beautiful creations you see on Pinterest or Instagram, although it can be, and I like to make mine quite pretty because I'm a creative person, but that's not what bullet journaling is about. Bullet journaling is essentially putting your tasks into buckets of different scales, and it helps you to break down big tasks into many things that you can do on a daily basis. So you'll have your yearly log, which are things, big things you need to accomplish in this given year, then you have your monthly log where you break down those big tasks into smaller tasks that you can accomplish every month. And then you further break that down into your weekly or your daily log, which is what I need to accomplish today or this week to work up to those monthly tasks, to work up to that big annual task. And this is really, really helpful to kind of like break down your big PhD into, you know, uh, usable daily things that you need to get done to work up to this big thing. Another thing that I've recently discovered, and I really wish I'd known as a PhD, because I think it would have helped a lot, is calendar blocking. So now, okay, you have these set of tasks that you know you need to accomplish in a given week, but I found recently that because I have so much on my plate, I have so many different things, you know, if I struggle to sit down and just focus on one thing because I'll do a little bit of that and then I'll do a little bit of this and then I'll do a little bit of that. But if I calendar block and I set a time to my tasks, that helps me to keep on track with what I need to do at a certain time. It's essentially breaking your day down into blocks of time and then filling those blocks of time with specific tasks. So you know, okay, for the next three hours, I'm sitting down and I'm analyzing this data or I'm writing this part of my chapter. Um, and it helps, really helps with setting intention because you sit down and you know that's what you're gonna do. So you like kind of get your brain focused in, in that area. And I found it really, really helpful in terms of just like sitting down, focusing, getting my work done. So yeah, I, I think bullet journaling is great to figure out what tasks you need to do. Calendar blocking is really useful to like manage your time. But if there's anything else, another system that you use or you, you think, hang on, this isn't for me, there's like tons of other systems out there that you can use. So go do a bit of research, find what works for you, but you really need to find a way where you can organize and manage your time and your tasks. So now you've got your organizational system down, you've got your note-taking app, you've got your task manager, you are sorted, you sit down at your desk and you think to yourself, I really don't feel like doing this today. And that's okay. You are going to have times in your PhD where you really don't feel motivated. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. There are going to be certain times where you don't feel motivated and you aren't productive. 
but you do need to find ways to get yourself out of that slump and to keep yourself motivated and you just need to find out what works for you so perhaps you know most of the time your schedule is quite flexible so perhaps you like to work slightly more during the week so that you can take a friday afternoon off maybe you do something like the pomodoro technique where you work for 25 minutes and then you have a five minute break and in those five minutes you do something that like revs your engines you know whether it's a sweet or run around the you know your garden quickly or watch five minutes of a youtube video just something to like get you keep you going throughout the day and really you have to maintain a work-life balance i mean there's this sometimes there's this weird culture in phd programs where you like have to be the last person in the lab and you know the person who works the most is the best and it's like this weird a competitive environment where people just think they need to work all the time that is really not healthy um, for most people maybe you love to be in the lab all the time good for you I'm definitely not like that I need a work-life balance because as much as you're doing a PhD because you love it and it's a topic you're interested in at least I hope so otherwise what are you doing a PhD for but um, you are not your PhD, like there are other aspects to you and you need to indulge in those other aspects. Maybe it's binge watching Netflix on a Sunday, maybe it's going for a hike and doing something outdoors, you know, spending time with friends and family. You have to maintain a work-life balance and know that you are more than your PhD. You can take a step back from it, do other things with your life so that when you come back to work on a Monday morning, you're fresh, you're motivated, you're ready to go. So yeah, again, find what works for you, find a way to stay motivated, but also be kind to yourself during those times where you're really, really not feeling motivated. Okay, we're chugging along nicely. We've got our organization system sorted. We've got our motivation. We are ready to work. We are being productive on our PhD. How do we make sure we stay on the right track? How do we make sure we stay productive? That is to reduce distractions. Now, the one thing we've learned in this world of email, social media, notifications, instant messaging, is that our focus and attention is precious and it can break like that. We have an email from our supervisor, we have a WhatsApp from our mom, we have an Instagram tag from our friend, and our brain is just doing this all the time. And that is not how you get a PhD done because you really need to sit and you need to focus and you need to be attentive to the work that you're doing at that time. You need to get into that like deep work groove zone where you're focused on the task that you're doing. That's the only way you're gonna produce your PhD at the end of the way, because you need to be innovative. You know, you're at the forefront of your scientific research field, or perhaps you are writing something incredible in the humanity side of things. Like, you know, a PhD is, a monumental task that is required of your brain and so you need to make sure that you are giving your brain the best chance to like get into that deep workflow so you can make sure you're doing the work and you're focusing and having distractions is the death of that so actually during my phd i quit pretty much all of my social media i did a video on that i'm not saying you need to quit social media but definitely turn off all your notifications and schedule yourself social media time in the day um, turn off notifications on instant messaging services you know kind of the only thing that came through on my phone were phone calls because they're usually a bit more urgent but i didn't get instant messages or anything like that emails are also like <laughs> can be really really dangerous um, you know, our brains are trained to value new information. They're like these monkey brains. We're like, oh, there's new things coming to me. Let's go have a look there. And that's not what you need to do. So again, schedule yourself email time, sort through your emails, and then close your email while you're working on the thing that you're working on. Because this is really the only way you're going to reduce distractions, reduce the noise, get into the zone, get into the workflow, and do what you need to do for your PhD. Okay final tip is to break it down bad dancing moves aside <laughs> okay we're not talking about dancing here but we're talking about breaking your huge phd down into manageable things and this kind of harkens back to my first point where i was talking about bullet journaling and breaking down your tasks um i just wanted to expand on this a bit more because you know it can be really daunting to think at the end of three or more years i have to hand in 
this thesis and how do I get to producing this thesis and it can kind of make you like stagnant and being like oh what do I do now like a deer caught in headlights kind of thing and you really just need to break it down you know your thesis is broken down into chapters your chapters are broken down into sections you have different ideas that go in certain places and the more you break it down and the more you turn it into easy manageable tasks the easier it is to do you think okay today i need to do a literature review for a specific chapter i know this chapter is about xyz so i know i need to search for xyz and i need to write about xyz and it's these small tasks that you can then tick off you're like oh yes i did this oh yes i did this so you've got your small manageable tasks that you're ticking off it's got you on a flow it's got you on a roll and that can kind of keep you going throughout that's really going to help you stay motivated it's really going to help you stay productive and um yeah just break it down into small little bits and at the end of the day all the small little bits will add up to a big bit will add up to your phd voila okay that's it from my side into how you can stay productive, motivated on it in your PhD. I really hope you found this video helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. If you have any other kind of topics that you'd like me to cover about being a PhD or what it's like to be a PhD, also please put those suggestions down there because it has been a while since I've done a video talking about the PhD life, but I do really enjoy them and I know it helps you guys quite a bit. So yeah, please put any suggestions down below. Until next time, stay healthy, stay productive, stay safe. Bye-bye.